Neil starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Thursday. It is February 4th. Almost one year into the pandemic. We've spent a lot more time at home. We've been cooking more or trying out some cooking. And would you be surprised if we told you there's a very good chance that on average, most of you have five things in your refrigerator right now that are absolute junk and should be trashed because they're rotten. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. You think you have four or five things in the fridge? Well, I, I am the exception to the rule. I think I've said this before. My husband is like a very strict with a refrigerator and he's always throwing things out, but I can see this happening. But a lot. almost everybody else. Yes, yes, you, yes. Have <laughs> five, you have five <laughs> rotten things in your fridge. Yeah, from moldy meatloaf to smelly beans buried on the back shelf. The average American fridge is a horror show. New survey finds there are at least five items past their expiration date in the typical refrigerator right now. The one poll survey of 2000 Americans revealed the average person believes it will take five weeks before they find the foulest item lurking in their fridge. And among the shocking finds, respondents say they discovered cream cheese that had gone pink, moldy cucumber water, and even insects hiding inside. The survey commissioned by Rubbermaid also reveals the average person has spent 19 more minutes in the kitchen each day since the pandemic began. That's total 97 additional hours in the kitchen. Uh, also, nearly two th in three people, 64% in their survey, say their increased cooking habits are creating more leftovers sitting in the refrigerators. Yeah, I also said 60% confess they sometimes forget their leftovers are still in the fridge. That that would be me. And then my husband's like, hey, what about this? What about this? <laughs> Forgotten leftovers can also lead to unpleasant moments later. Over half the poll, 56% said they hate wasting food, but 45% hate the cleanup and 41% can't stand the smell of their forgotten meals. So when in doubt, mm -hmm. throw it out and just take a look in there. Look past the whatever sitting up towards the front, cottage cheese, beer bottles, whatever. Look further to the back, look in the shelf. Yes, it can it can be embarrassing if you have guests. I, I don't mean to call out my sister in law, but I think I will because it was kind of funny. All right. Uh, we were <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> we were visiting her and you know, it was snack time. So like, hey, we have these strawberries, you know, would y'all like some strawberries and cool up? I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. So we had the strawberries out, they were ready to go and she opened the cool whip and it was like so green, it looked like guacamole. <laughs> We're like, okay, we're not going to eat that. But it wasn't guacamole. No, but it really looked like it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I really bad. like this survey. <laughs> I like it when you spill the beans about family yeah. like that stuff. Lots of fun. <laughs> Let's look at today's 9 at 9. A new study has found not only could the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine protect against the virus, it could reduce transmission. This comes as the U.S. sees a decline in hospitalizations and infections. Local health officials reported 1,012 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, along with 15 more deaths. The seven-day moving average is now below 1,500 cases a day. President Joe Biden expected to announce an increase in the amount of refugees admitted into the U.S. The Trump administration set a refugee cap of 15,000 for the current fiscal year. It's unclear how much the Biden administration will increase the cap to. However, President Biden has pledged to set an annual admissions cap of 125,000. The U.S. Secretary of Defense is ordering a staggered pause of operations across the military so commanders can review the handling of extremism in the armed forces. Concerns about extremism in the military have spiked following the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. Authorities have charged at least 22 people in connection with the riot who are either formally or currently associated with the military. Today, lawmakers will decide whether to take action against freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene for supporting conspiracy theories. Republican leaders say Greene apologized for the comments and should not be removed from her committees. American Airlines says it may need to furlough 13,000 workers in April after the U.S. government payroll aid expires. The company says it plans to work with union leaders and will try to get Congress to extend the payroll aid through September. Apple says some iCloud services have been running slow or have not been working at all. The company says some of the problems have been fixed, but some users are still running into partial outages. Apple has not said what caused them. Impossible Foods is cutting its prices by 20%, saying its goal is to help the environment. The company says the reduction is an effort to attract more consumers and take business from meat industries. It wants to encourage sustainable food options to reduce climate change. 
Chick-fil-A is now offering to package select menu items in heart-shaped trays in celebration of Valentine's Day. The trays will be available at participating restaurants through Saturday, February 13th. And that's today's Night at Night. Have you heard back from your sister-in-law yet? No, not yet. Well, she yeah. kn she knows it. She was laughing too. It was so bad. Uh -huh. It you know we questioned it like, oh, is that guacamole? Well, should we pull out the chips? But she was like, no, and she just dumped it in the well, trash. Well, maybe maybe we just don't mention nasty strawberries for we we'll give her a break. Yeah, for a couple of weeks. The strawberries were good. It was the Cool Whip. Yeah. Oh, the Cool Whip. Sorry. Yeah. yeah so yeah, the strawberries were looking awesome, and so she opened the Cool Whip. Yeah, we can eat them with Cool Whip. And I was like, ooh, that's well, the green. The skies are looking like old Cool Whip outside, <laughs> yeah. Justin Horn. That's one way to describe it, I suppose. Yeah, a lot of cloud cover, a lot of fog out there at the moment. We're watching visibility pretty closely this morning. The visibility is down at the airport, down to about five miles. Carrizo Springs, you've been dealing with quite a bit of fog. Del Rio, Rock Springs, two places where the fog is fairly thick this morning. Let's look at the visibilities on the map here. We'll show you exactly where most of that fog is at this hour. Uh, Carrizo Springs, again, Del Rio. Uh, a little bit here in San Antonio, we did see some reports of lower visibility up there around uh, Bernie stage. Uh, temperature wise, 60 degrees at the airport, 61 Randolph, 64 New Braunfels, 58 in Bandera. Pollen count is in. For whatever reason, mold and mountain cedar jumped up today. They're both in the moderate category now. Ash and Elm stay low. And the forecast is going to be mighty warm this afternoon. We're expecting temperatures to eventually jump into the 80s for highs, 81 before a front comes through right around dinner time. That makes things breezy. It will be vastly different tomorrow. We'll let you know how those temperatures change. Plus, we're still watching next week. We could see some pretty cold stuff next week, too. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Top stories are following today. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is still looking for the two men they believe were involved in the shooting of a Balcones Heights police officer. So take a look at your screen and see if you recognize these men. One of the suspects is believed to be the driver of a Ford pickup. The other suspect is believed to have opened fire on Sergeant Joey Sepulveda and Officer Edgar Ortiz. Sergeant Sepulveda and Officer Ortiz were investigating people who may have been burglarizing vehicles in the parking lot of the Seoul Apartments in the 6900 block of I-10 near Loop 410 around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. Sepulveda was shot in the neck and shoulder. Ortiz was not wounded. Again, if you recognize these suspects, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office right now at 210-335-6000. And right now, we're still waiting to learn the name of the man who was killed during a drive-by shooting overnight. Now, police tell us the victim was shot in the head and pronounced dead on the scene. Happened just before 1030 last night in the 9100 block of Roquefort Drive. That's on the northwest side near New Gilbo Road and Loop 1604. Police say they have a vehicle and a possible suspect in custody. Right now, police are still investigating a motive for this shooting. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez announcing area residents are being targeted in a PayPal scam. Scammers are calling Bear County residents claiming a warrant has been issued for their arrest and that they must immediately spend payment or excuse me, send payment via PayPal. Uh, Gonzalez says the calls sound convincing but are fake. If you have questions or someone's contacted you about an active warrant, delinquent payments or a missed jury duty, you're asked to call the district attorney's office 210-335-2311. And in your morning headlines, we will show you the faces of the two FBI agents gunned down in Florida and jobless claims are down. An attic full of treasured photos and a family of Chiefs fans ready for a big Sunday. We're talking about the big game, David Sears. The big game on Sunday. Yeah, we'll get to that game. in just a second. First, let's start with this, though. You're looking at the faces of Daniel Affin and Laura Schwitzenberger. We we'll finally have a chance to put a face with the name after that tragic shooting in Florida that ended the life of these two FBI agents. The FBI released the photos. Now, the two agents were serving a federal search warrant as part of their investigation of crimes against children. Alfin was 36 years old, born in New York. He leaves behind a wife and one child. Schwarzenberger was 43. She survived by her husband and two children. Three other agents were wounded in that raid. The suspect was killed. Prosecutors in Kenosha, Wisconsin, want Kyle Rittenhouse back in jail. Rittenhouse is the 18-year-old accused of shooting and killing two people and wounding a third during a Black Lives Matter protest in Kenosha after the death of Jacob Blake last August. He is facing homicide and attempted homicide charges. Rittenhouse is out of jail on a $2 million bond, but prosecutors say he has moved and didn't notify the court, which makes it difficult to keep up with him. So they want his bond raised $200,000 
A former lawyer for the Tangiers says Rittenhouse has moved to a safe house because of death threats and that the Kenosha police chief told him not to put down the safe house address on court documents. Rittenhouse is due back in court on March 10th. There has been another decline in the number of Americans looking for help from unemployment benefits. Last week's number is down to 779,000. It is down from 812,000 from the previous week. It's the lowest number in two months. The jobs market is still suffering from the pandemic, but there are some good signs for the economy. Auto sales rose in January, and so did spending on home construction. The January government jobs report due out tomorrow. Economists expect a weak gain of only about 100,000 jobs. Now you're in the attic of a building in New York with David Whitcomb. He bought the building for his law office, and one day he discovered a treasure trove of pictures in the attic, including a picture of Susan B. Anthony, the women's rights activist. The picture was taken by James Hale back in 1905. Wickham found a lot of pictures and camera equipment all by accident. One day he went to change a light bulb, noticed the dropped ceiling looked a little funny, climbed through an access panel, turned on his cell phone flashlight and voila, all kinds of fun stuff. He found several glass negatives, found pictures of Grover Cleveland's fiance. He's going to get some of the negatives developed to see what else he has. By the way, that picture of Susan B. Anthony is the one that was licensed to be sold on postcards. All right, finally, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to Go after their second Super Bowl in a row. It's going to be a big day for Patrick, but not that Patrick, that Patrick right there. Because that little Patrick is Patrick Steppy. He was born last February 2nd, right in the middle of the big game when the Chiefs were taking on the 49ers. Kyle and Heather even made a bet. If the baby was born during that game, they would name him Patrick, right on cue. Really knows how to make an entrance. He even caught the attention of the other Patrick. Hey, Kyle and Heather, uh, appreciate the support. Love the baby's name, and uh, hopefully he's a good football player as I am. And he tracks the game, and he loves watching it, and he loves playing football. It's going to be a huge Sunday for that family, though, because the older brother, Vincent, actually turned seven on the day of the big game. So that's pretty cool. And speaking of the Chiefs, now you remember earlier this week, as you look at the, the Cutins, Aww. a couple of guys on the Chiefs, receiver Demarcus Robinson and center Daniel Kilgore, ended up on the COVID-19 reserve list because they came in contact with somebody who was positive, right? Right. That somebody was the team barber. Last Saturday, the barber came in and cut DeMarcus's hair. He came back on Sunday. Now, he had tested negative five times, five negative oh, wow. tests. Comes in on Sunday. They give him another test. He's in the middle of cutting Kilgore's hair, and they find out he's positive, so he has to leave right then. Kilgore's hair is like half cut. So there's pictures on the Internet. I don't think we could show them yet, but there's pictures on the Internet. of his. He's got like a half mohawk on this side and bald on this side. And here's the kicker. 20 guys were in line to get the haircut, and the report is including Patrick Mahomes. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. So, yeah, so there you go. Uh, so. The COVID cut. The COVID, the COVID cut. cut. So, thank oh you, David. Pretty funny. 9 11, 62 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A closer look at Amazon's tower headquarters and when the project is expected to be complete. Texas Tribune talked with Governor Greg Abbott. We'll check in with Alana Rocha from the Trib about the interview coming up later in our newscasts. Plus, a local teacher getting creative when it comes to teaching her students after the break, how she's implementing TikTok into her curriculum. A local teacher making moves on TikTok, but it's not about the latest dance. Sarah Kajenski is a virtual seventh grade math teacher, teacher, I can say that, using the popular app to create parodies of popular songs for her math lessons. Our Alicia Benetta caught up with the educator to learn more on how her students, parents, and other teachers have responded to her use of TikTok and how it's become an integral part of her curriculum. It's one of the hottest apps out there. A lot of my students were obsessed with TikTok. And now, seventh grade math teacher Sarah Kajenski I got my pencil and I got my paper is just as obsessed. I'm ready to solve them. I teach for Texas Virtual Academy Hallsville. I joke that it's the best professional development I've ever attended um, because I learn something new every time I open the app. We want to know what is the probability of the spinner landing on a green or an even number. Put the number you want on top, the total on the bottom. The educator has found a way to engage with students across Texas enrolled at Texas Virtual Virtual Academy Hallsville and keeps them logging in for class with upbeat lessons like this one. To solve all of these problems with ease. Yeah. Inspired by Ariana Grande's song Seven Rings. Circling under lighting 
checking for clues. Yeah, I circle the numbers, underline the question. I box in the keywords and write an equation. So I create like these like math parodies, answer, right, of thinks. popular songs, and they'll tell me like, oh my gosh, Mrs. K, it's stuck in my head. And I'm like, that's the point. How <laughs> one is participation? students were working with inverse operations and they were having a really hard time remembering what was inverse of the other multiplication and division and things like that and I was like this kind of reminds me of a Missy Elliott song and so then that's when I came up with is it worth it can I work it identify the operation and in inverse it multiply means I need division so thanks but no I think I'm good to go she says the TikToks are fun and actually pretty easy to make but for the most part they're super quick like I'll just kind of get an idea in my head um, I'll sketch it down on a post-it note like this. Then we will divide and convert to a percent. The decimal moves to spots to the right and then you are finished. Mrs. K says school administrators and even parents approve really and good. encourage her methods. It was just, I mean, that's the best gift you can give a teacher is that kind of positive feedback about how you've helped their student. But as far as like where I'm, I'm going with this, hopefully just more engagement from students and, and more followers on TikTok so I can reach a wider audience. Don't want to be All right, so currently Mrs. Kajinski is working on a new song and we heard a little bit of it. It's about mean, median, and mode and we don't know exactly when that tune is going to drop. But Mrs. K says that she hopes other educators are interested in implementing this strategy. And she actually shared with me there's a community of international teachers on the app. That page is called School of TikTok. And again, it is within TikTok and hopefully more teachers are inspired to do this. Mark Steff. And Alicia, what about the students or teachers or, or even us, people that don't have TikTok? Is there a way to watch the videos? Yes, absolutely. So Mrs. K actually started a YouTube page. So she downloaded the TikTok videos and has uploaded them on YouTube. So that provides equity for all students, parents, and even us out here who are probably going to get these tunes stuck in our heads. And she even made playlists. There's ones for stress and school management. So there's something for everyone. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, if the kids dig it. Yeah, Why it's, not, right? it's working. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Live just uh, outside of downtown. You know, I could see doing weather here in a similar style. Justin, not picking on you. Katie Blake could do this probably in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you, yes. Can't, yes. Can't you see it? I could. And we were just talking about TikTok and we're starting to try to incorporate it in the uh -huh. weather. So we're going to see. Yeah. Well, there it, you go. It's the new wave. All right. Man. <laughs> and, and, and you can take the lead or, or we can let Katie experiment with it. However you want to do this. We'll let Katie start it off. Yeah. Team effort. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll work it in later. OK. Yeah. Okay. But uh, let's talk about the fog real quick, guys. Uh, we do have quite a bit of it out there this morning. We're kind of perched up high here, so it looks like there's a lot of fog. It's not that bad here in San Antonio, but this is the time lapse, and yeah, visibility hasn't been great. There's also a little bit of mist and drizzle mixed in there. 60 degrees at the airport right now. Southwesterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. If you're hoping for some sun, don't worry. It will be there this afternoon, and temperatures will really warm up. Visibility-wise, though, I mentioned okay here in San Antonio. Bernie Stage did have some lower visibility a bit earlier. Seeing some improvement there. Rock Springs improving. They were down close to zero now, two mile visibility. Creso Springs, same story. So I think across the board here, fog is starting to lift. We can see the cloud cover and some of that fog in our visible satellite picture. And eventually these clouds will break up. It'll probably take until about lunchtime for that to happen. Once it does, temperatures will rock it up pretty quickly. Uh, 64 degrees, New Braunfels, 61 in Kerrville, 60 in Uvalde, 55 Creso Springs, 60 in Pleasanton. And there's a look at the dew points here, extremely high. Dew points near 60, that's almost muggy. It feels a little bit muggy out there. Uh, but that will also change with our cold front passage this afternoon. Here's a look at the daytime highs. Here's what we think. 81 here in San Antonio, even some mid-80s around Carrizo Springs. If you're curious, the record high today is 85. Don't think we get there, but we could get close here in town. Here's the forecast. And that front... Uh, we expect it sometime around dinner time, maybe five, six o'clock starts to move through. No rain with this front as it does. We'll get some gusty winds behind it. It now looks like clouds are going to build in tomorrow, especially tomorrow morning. 
and we could even see a sprinkle or two, especially northeast of San Antonio as a little piece of energy works through and then it may take until the afternoon to get some clearing. So tomorrow is going to be very different. It's going to be quite a bit cooler and you compare the two. This afternoon we're talking 81, mostly sunny. You go to school and work tomorrow, it'll be breezy 48, and we're talking wind chills in the low 40s. So big difference here, just a heads up tomorrow as you get ready for work and school. Winds will also be an issue. This is around 5 o'clock this afternoon. Winds picking up with the front. We could see some gusts up around 25, even the overnight gusts to close to 30 in some spots. And then the winds will try to lighten up a little bit tomorrow morning, but not before. We get some wind chills again, maybe in the low 40s, even upper 30s. Here's the setup, big trough coming across the middle part of the country. This is starting the process of drawing some very cold air down from Canada. And as we look at the forecast over the weekend and into next week, it gets really cold in Minneapolis. We looked at this yesterday, but now we're thinking negative 15 Sunday morning. Wind chills maybe negative 30, negative 40, somewhere in that range. And then the big question becomes, will this cold air make it all the way to Texas? I got to tell you, there's still some questions here. Models are still a little uncertain. It's a very shallow air mass, and those are notoriously hard to predict timing. But we do think maybe Tuesday into Wednesday, some of this colder air works in. It potentially could be colder middle part to the end of next week, but it's just a little too early to say for sure just yet. So here's how the seven day forecast looks. 81 degrees today, but 61 tomorrow. 20 degree temperature difference here behind that front. 67 on Saturday with some morning clouds. We get it up to 71 on Sunday. Some morning clouds Monday. Monday now looks pretty warm, 76. And then Tuesday will be potentially a transition day depending on the timing of that front. And we do think it will be colder on Wednesday, but maybe a slight chance for some showers. Guys. We have a lot going on there, my friend. Thank yep. you. Yes. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Have you ever deleted an Instagram post and wanted it back? Well, Instagram now has a solution. The details next. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KZDeals.com. Are you slouching while you're watching today? There's an easy way to improve posture and ease back pain. As seen on Shark Tank, Better Back Lux Posture Support can help retrain your body's default posture in just 15 minutes a day. People usually sit about nine hours each day, so why not do it right? Made from NASA-engineered memory foam for ultra-sitting comfort. Slip-resistant knee pads to help prevent sliding up when worn. Custom webbing straps to get the best ergonomic fit. It's easy, just wrap the back pad around your back, wrap the knee straps around your knees, adjust the straps to stack your spine in the perfect posture. Now it folds up into a compact carry case and the retail price for this is $59, but the case at deals price is $49.99. That is a 16% discount. Again, it comes with this nice little case and you can get this deal plus many more on caseatdeals.com. We are learning more about what Amazon's new two and a half billion dollar headquarters in Arlington, Virginia will look like. So take a look. The design proposal includes three 22 story buildings, an outdoor amphitheater, public plazas and a 350 foot tall double helix tower. Now the helix will be a glass spiral structure covered with trees where a series of alternative work environments will be. Project's lead architect says the vast majority of the two acres of ground level space will be accessible to the public. Construction is projected to be completed by 2025. That's cool. And are you having a little remorse over a deleted Instagram post? Well, the social media app has a solution. Instagram says it now has a feature that will allow users to recover deleted content. This applies to Instagram photos, videos, stories, and IGTV videos. It was introduced at the request of users. The app also has added protections to keep hackers from deleting your posts. Oh, well, that's good. A lot more on GMSA at 9. Go Spurs go. Silver Black won against the Timberwolves in pretty convincing fashion last night. David and RJ will be here with our Spurs chat coming up after the break. Plus, the Texas legislature will take up the task of redistricting when they receive the results from the 2020 census. That's still ahead in today's KSET Explained. And renters right here in Texas behind on the rent will soon get some help from a new program. We'll talk with Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Texas renters behind on their rent will soon be able to get help from a new program. And Governor Greg Abbott talking about his executive authority in an interview with the Texas Tribune. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. 
A lot of start in Washington where the Biden administration unveiled this new elements of its immigration agenda this week as it works to undo the Trump administration's hardline policies. We understand the orders the president signed this week cover a lot of ground. Yeah, I mean, more executive orders in these uh, first weeks of the Biden administration. Uh, three this week that we uh, highlight in our reporting are two that call for uh, his administration to review both the migration uh, protocol protection program, MPP, commonly known as Remain in Mexico, uh, where uh, U.S. asylum seekers need to wait uh, in Mexico for U.S. asylum hearings on this side of the border. It's been tens of thousands of people waiting over there in some dangerous areas of Mexico, very controversial. And rather than just undoing it, uh, the president wants to look at uh, the program before he he just you know decides what's next. Also looking at reviewing some policies the Trump administration had with regards to curbing legal migration. And then, of course, creating a task force to help reunite the estimated 600 kids that are still separated from their parents after the zero tolerance policy from a few years back. And Alana, also this week, U.S. Senator John Cornyn reaffirmed his support for a congressional fix for dreamers. Yeah, they say the the political climate could be ripe to finally address uh, those uh, adults here in the country who were brought to the U.S. through no fault of their own, uh, the so-called dreamers, and U.S. Senator John Cornyn, who's in the leadership in, in the Senate, of course, powerful Republican, uh, has supported this for many years. Uh, of course, Democrats call him out on different votes he's made, but he said in this one issue, not part of a, in a con, you know, comprehensive immigration plan, he does support giving the 106,000 or so estimated uh, dreamers here in Texas alone a legal permanent status so they don't have to worry and they can continue contributing to the economy. He c came together this week with a coalition of um, local economic development boards as well as higher ed and institutions hoping to uh, get this across the finish line. Governor Greg Abbott says he's open to reforming his emergency powers after months of criticism from both parties. The Texas Tribune spoke with the governor in a wide ranging interview. What did he say he's open to when it comes to concerns about his executive authority? Yeah, that his office is working with lawmakers to craft legislation that would help uh, the state pre-plan a response to some of these emergencies. But he stresses that he still wants his office uh, and position to be able to retain the authority to make split second decisions, because oftentimes working with the federal government agencies there will, will give the state 24 hours to respond. And he acknowledged in the interview, and we know that the legislature that meets every two years uh, does not move that fast. And so he said it's vital to retain that power. But yeah, he's gotten uh, some criticism from both in his own party and across the aisle for mass mandates, for shutting down businesses and things like that in the past. And Alana, Texas tenants behind on rent will soon be able to seek aid from a $1.3 billion assistance program. Now, this new program comes after a separate state initiative was criticized for its limited scope and because many landlords declined to participate. So how will this one be different? Uh, two key things. One, uh, this one's much bigger. As you said, $1.3 billion. The previous one was $3.3 million. Uh, this is uh, funds from the Treasury Department that are coming through uh, the state. Uh, the way to apply and things like that will be worked out in the next couple of weeks with checks uh, expected to come the following two weeks. Uh, but the other way it's different is the previous program, as you said, uh, required landlords to also be in for you know the program. And a lot of landlords didn't want to participate, but this uh, program won't hinge, tenants and landlords won't hinge on the other uh, accepting uh, the terms of the program and both can apply for help. All right, Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Good to see you, ma'am. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Same to you. Thank you. Outside with live cam. Yeah, you may have to click on the AC later today, right, Justin? Entirely possible as temperatures jump up to the low 80s this afternoon. We're on cold front watch right now. We can see it as we look at temperatures across the state of Texas. It's it's pretty clear exactly where it is up there across the Texas panhandle. It is cooling down now. Places like Amarillo and Lubbock. That front will take its sweet time, though. Probably won't be here until around dinner time for us. So before it gets here, it is going to get awful warm. We're expecting uh, highs again today in the low 80s, 81 here in San Antonio. You can see the extreme difference there between places like Laredo, which may get up close to 90, and Amarillo, which will only see highs in the 40s today. So it'll make a big change here by tomorrow's well. Temperature-wise right now, 60 degrees at the airport, 61 Boulevardi, 59 Rio Medina, 60 right now in Hondo. And forecast for today, again, up around 81, then turning breezy by about 6 o'clock, and it will be cooler 
tomorrow morning. Guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, so RJ Marcus wrote, it wasn't pretty, but the Spurs beat Minnesota. I will argue it is pretty because a win is a win. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. wow. You're just throwing me right under that bus. <laughs> and they snapped a two-game uh, losing wow. streak in the process. Yeah. David and RJ are here to either rant Ooh. or rave. A little bit of both, Jeff. maybe. Okay, <laughs> okay. Good job. No, yeah, a win is a win. But I, I think, David, when we were watching this game last night, I mean, down by 16 in the fourth quarter, and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way they could lose this game. You know how many they remotes? They did come back. Good, <laughs> good on them. You know how many remotes clicked the TV off last night? Uh, I'm sure there were a few When they got down town. 16, they were yeah. like, click, that's done, I'm going to bed. They looked bad. They looked bad. Credit to the Spurs. For I got in bed, back. but I left the TV on just in case. And sure enough, here yeah. they come. <laughs> Big run in the fourth quarter. You know, they started out okay, got the little mm -hmm. lead, and I'm going to go back to what you said the other day. Look, mm. the cell got some, yeah. uh, got some playing yeah. time because Spurs were down two guys last night, uh, Rudy Gay and LaMarcus Aldridge. That's you know, right. But yeah. remember when you were talking about Lonnie Walker mm -hmm. and you were wondering if he was going to stay in the starting lineup and whether or not – Derek White would get that starting role in place. Mm -hmm. of Lonnie Walker struggled big time last night. So yeah, he. I'm starting to lean your direction on that one. <laughs> Lonnie, uh, Lonnie's gone a little bit of a cold streak here, and uh, Coach Pop did say that after the game that you know they need to figure out what's going on with him, and he, Lonnie just needs to play basketball. Uh, Derek White, uh, third game back, looked pretty solid, but really. Down the stretch here, uh, DeJounte hit a couple of shots, but DeMar DeRozan was just like the dude again in the, the fourth dude. quarter. And there are times when he just puts yeah, him on Derek, his back. Boom. Yeah, Derek Thank looking you. great. Uh, there are times when DeMar just kind of puts him on his back. Had 30 points, including, boom, that big Ouch. slam right there. So with 10 minutes and 21 seconds left in the game, it was 97-81 Minnesota. That's what we're talking about. People were just like, all right, I'm going to bed. Mm -hmm. With four minutes and 50 seconds left in the game, it was 99-99. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty good run of 20-2 to two to get that thing tied up. And then I think Minnesota took the lead, and then Spurs tied it up again. Then the Spurs were able to, able to hold on. At the very, this is look at uh, look at Dejounte's defense right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Elliott even gave him a lot of yeah, credit there. Um, so yeah, like uh, we saw there Jakob Pertl also 19 points, eight rebounds. Jakob, big Jakob. Remember we yes. got on him at the beginning of the season, <laughs> and ever he's since then he's good. been playing better. Yeah, he definitely has. Uh, let's he does from, not like us getting on him. No, That's, definitely that not. Was us. He absolutely watches us. <laughs> uh, let's hear from Jakob and Demar after this game. <laughs> We found a, a way to space out a little bit better in the second half and, and some some lanes opened up for us and then they had to come help and, and they found me on a couple of nub offs. So um, I think we, we were just flowing um, really well there in that stretch. Be aggressive as possible, you know, going downhill, trying to create, not just for myself, for my teammates and, you know, just try to get us some type of momentum. Starting in the fourth quarter, just me coming out, trying to be in attack mode. And you know what's amazing about last night's win? They were not wearing Steph's oh, favorite boy. uniform. Oh, the Fiesta, <laughs> the Fiesta outfits. Mm -hmm. the Fiesta outfits were, no. were nowhere to be seen last night. But they, they won. still won. Yes, yeah, they did. So they do pretty good in the Fiesta outfits. <laughs> yes, they do. But yeah, I like that. So anyway, so after the win last night, they're back up into eighth place. I quit looking at the uh, standings for a while, man, because you lose one, you're out. You win one, you're back in. So mm -hmm. that's getting to be mm -hmm. just like stressful. So, but. They play Friday night in Houston. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the Rockets, you know, after that trade mm -hmm. to get James Harden up to New York, they rock doing pretty good. So, yeah, um, they've they're, done they're right behind the Spurs. And they've done great. Um, that one is, well, I say Friday, it's Saturday at seven o'clock. And then they play Golden State, one of those back to back mm -hmm. two nights in a row things. Mm -hmm. But that one's here at home on, uh, what did I say, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Golden yeah. So, State, uh, home, home. So a couple of interesting games coming up, and including then, those. Yeah, that yeah. those Golden State games are going to be interesting because uh, the Warriors did kind of uh, blow them out out there in uh, San Francisco. Ooh, yeah, that was ugly. Last time, and Stephanie's like, <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie's like don't be negative. <laughs> but hey, I like yeah. the way you, you toned it down. You're like, they kind of blew them out. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. They, yeah. Kind of blew them out. It was, it was, it was Jaco Pertle night last night. So it was, that's yeah. That's pretty good. It was yeah. a good night. We can yeah. savor it. We yes, we we'll take it. Yes. <laughs> RJ, David, thank you guys. Right now it is 941, 62 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. After the break, this week's episode of Case It Explains examines how the process of redistricting has become so contentious and dives into why this year's process is expected to be different.
Redistricting is a complicated process that helps define the political landscape. The once a decade process is happening again this year. In this week's episode of KSET Explains, it dives into gerrymandering, preclearance, and why the process is expected to be different in 2021. Good morning, everybody. We know this is not a topic that anyone gets too overly excited about, right. but it is an incredibly important one. Redistricting. That's what happens when the census comes around, our population, America's headcount takes mm -hmm. place, and the map is redrawn when it comes to the districts in which we elect our political leaders here in Texas. That's what we're focusing on for this week's episode of KSAT Explains. Yeah, Myra, as you mentioned, once every 10 years do we go through this process in the Texas legislature, and this year will be one of the most critical ones when it comes to drawing up the maps and really determining what the future of this state is gonna look like when it comes to congressional seats and uh, really just a lot of stuff that has to do with voters and their rights as we move into the future. And we're explaining just the very basics here because I think a lot of people know the topic redistricting that's something we pay attention to in the legislature when that happens but what is it how does it happen how are these crazy maps drawn we take a look at what factors into all of that and why this year is going to be a little bit different the census data is delayed mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons we explain why that is and how that could affect when we actually see these new districts drawn and also take a look at the history that texas has of not exactly doing this in the best way. RJ, you took a look at that. Yeah, and this was very interesting. It's what's called preclearance, and this will be the first time since 1965 that Texas is able to draw the maps without the cover of preclearance. So we dive into what that is and why it really is uh, very important when it comes to the rights of minority voters and voters of color. So this is going to be a very interesting cycle, and hopefully we're able to explain exactly what is going on and hopefully give you guys an idea of uh, what to expect here as we get ready for an interesting uh, Texas legislature. Yeah, we're talking about, you know, voter suppression, disenfranchising mm -hmm. certain voter groups. So all of that factors into these crazy maps. Uh, we explain what you need to be paying attention to because we know it is a very broad topic. We know it's nuanced, but we're diving into that in this episode of KSAT Explains to give you a better idea of what to watch for when you're hearing about redistricting happening during this legislative session, what you should pay attention to and what the implications of these new lines on the Texas map could mean for you and who represents you in Washington. So check out this episode of KSAT Explains right now on our website, ksat.com slash explains or watch it on the KSAT TV app anytime on demand. Well, we're only about 34, 35 days into the new year. We've not exactly seen a plethora of precipitation around here, Justin Horn. No, not at nice, all. Nice alliteration, by the way. Plus it was an accident. Precipitation. I, I, well, I like it. It's Excellent. well done. <laughs> uh, it's true, though. We need some rain in the worst way. We haven't been getting much. There isn't a whole lot in the forecast, and so the drought monitor just keeps growing, as you might imagine. It's pretty similar to last week, maybe a little bit worse as you look across the state. And then as we zoom in on our area, it's, it's just like the same old picture we've seen for really about half a year now. Bandera down to Criso Springs, that's the area where we're still in an extreme drought. Bear County, much of Bear County still in a, a moderate to severe drought. So it's, uh, it's a situation in which we do desperately need some rain. And Medina Lake still falling down 40%. It's down 33 feet from the conservation pool. Outside right now, there is a little bit of precipitation, some light mist and drizzle. Of course, that's not going to add up to much. 61 degrees at the airport. A southwesterly wind at about 8 miles per hour. As we look at the uh, satellite picture, clouds have built in here over San Antonio. We've had a little bit of fog. And then you see the clearing line down here. So it's clear as you get uh, into Wilson County and you go east. We're also starting to see some clearing across the hill country. But it will take some time before that happens here in San Antonio. 61 degrees at the airport, 57 Bernie State, 60 in Honda, 64 right now in New Braunfels and uh, 58 in Del Rio, where there was some fog earlier. Most of the fog is lifted, but we're still dealing with these uh, morning clouds. Dew points are high, moisture shoved in here, especially overnight, and that helped create some of the cloud cover. Dew points are close to 60, so we're near the muggy category. Once those clouds burn off, though, we're going to get some drier air from the west, and temperatures are going to shoot up today. We're thinking 81 degrees for high here in town. We could see some mid 80s, if not upper 80s, down to the south and west. So it is going to be a hot day, but it's just a one day thing because we get a cold front through here by about dinner time. Five, six o'clock fronts coming through. 
once it uh, moves through, we'll see clouds start to build back in overnight into tomorrow morning. And we may even see a sprinkle or two, a little piece of energy working through. It's going to be very dry at the surface, so most everything's going to evaporate before it makes it to the surface. So we're not looking for any accumulation. And it will take some time again tomorrow for clouds to move out of here. So tomorrow will be much cooler. 81 degrees today, but once you go to school and work tomorrow morning, grab the jacket. You'll want it. It'll be a, a change. 48 tomorrow morning with breezy conditions. Wind chills could be in the low 40s to start your Friday. Talking about the wind, 5 o'clock today, winds start to pick up with the front. They stay gusty overnight. We could see some gusts up to close to 30 miles per hour. And then winds will calm some into tomorrow morning. Meantime, trough across the middle part of the country. This is starting the process of drawing in some cold air from Canada. This is something we're going to watch next week. So let's fast forward to Saturday. And if we look up towards Minneapolis, the numbers get really cold. These are temperatures, air temperatures, negative 15. Wind chills will be much worse. This cold air will start to spill down the plains early next week. Big question is, will it make it into Texas? These shallow air masses notoriously hard to forecast and time out. But we think that maybe by Wednesday, we'll be getting some of this cooler air and perhaps colder air. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. But uh, right now, we've dropped temperatures down to 50 on Wednesday. Breezy again tonight with that front 61 tomorrow, 67 Saturday, 70 Sunday and Monday. And again, changes next week. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 61 degrees right now. We'll see the clouds clear out. We'll get some sun this afternoon. We're up to 81, but vastly different tomorrow behind a front 61 on your Friday with some breezy winds, especially in the morning, moderating a bit by the weekend. And we'll be watching next week closely. Anybody who knows me that I'm a pushover for my yellow Labrador Truman mm -hmm. uh, of um, and, and I am a put I, I put up with a lot of things, but apparently I'm not alone. No, a lot mm -hmm. of people are. Uh, this survey says seven, seven in 10 pet owners let their furry friends get away with anything because they're too cute. <laughs> yeah, this poll asked 2000 <laughs> pet owners about the bad habits they've picked up and how they react. 71% said they're more lenient with their pets than a significant other's bad habits. Yeah. But hopefully your significant other doesn't do a lot of the things that, that your pet does. Right. N no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, thank goodness. No. So no. The, uh, the average pet parent puts up with 15 bad habits a week, including. Let's see. Uh, where is it? Range from sitting on the com sitting on their computer and deleting their work to. Eat. Ooh. Oh, there you go. And then, e oh, yeah, there you go. The graphic. Eating something they shouldn't. Knocking like things off the counter. And then, like I said, sitting on their computer and deleting their work. Uh, pet parents also put up with uh, four stinky pet emissions a week, <laughs> as if we can control that. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of smelling, uh, they also put up with smelling their bad breath three times a week. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, another common bad habit America's pets have in common are their cravings for table scraps and something less appetizing, eating their own. Um, emissions? <laughs> emissions? But uh, what are you gonna do, right? We, yeah. we love our dogs. Of course. Who's a good boy, Truman? Yeah. I know love you're you, watching Gordo. Truman. <laughs>